for for this yeah so okay <clears throat> so let's start my name is uh, david castrillo i take care of the of the hamamatsu office uh, of spain and and portugal the office started in 1991 and i started in 1993 in january so it's quite a long way but something nice in Hamamatsu is that we are always learning about uh, applications or technologies. And here uh, I want to introduce a very unique and a special kind of a light source that uh, was invented and patented and everything by Energetic. And now is a division of uh, Hamamatsu. So in my presentation i will try to divide in two parts one is uh, the basics of the technology and the other is the some applications that uh, applications in in microscopy because I've also there are many other kind of applications for such a light sources uh, first few words on energetic energetic was a startup uh, founded in 2004 near boston uh, it's created by a group of people that had a deep uh, expertise in plasma and they developed this uh, unique uh, way of uh, lighting. Uh, Hamamatsu had some relationship with them, successful, and at the end they saw a very interesting potential market opportunities. And in 2017, uh, the company was purchased. It is something very unusual for Hamamatsu. As far as I remember, there are only three companies as a company purchased in, let's say, in the last uh, 25 years or, or so. So it's very, very unique case. Probably in the future, it will be more often. Though. One thing that I like a lot from Energetic is that the management team is, uh, is uh, oh, all the management team are ladies, are women, and this is, a, this is very good also in order to, to push the transformation in Japan. So it's something I really like and it moves very well. So anyway, let's move to to the products, uh, we, we, we have at uh, Energetic uh, three kind of products. One is the, the basic one on the left, the laser drive and light source is the main product I want to, to talk. The one in the middle is an extension that's uh, having a, a kind of a monochromator to make a light source tunable and to, to have a monochromatic light. And the third one is a kind of a big systems that uh, they they made mainly for semiconductor industry that are using extremely UV uh, source. From the first part, uh, you can see in the bottom there are more than ten thousand installations, but it is true that most of them are linked to semiconductor testing, semiconductor quality control. And so on, this is a big part because of the UV emission that it's in, important. But also there are 20% of other applications, uh, many of them in, in astrophysics, but also starting in microscopy. The turnable light source is a quite uh, new product because it combines with this uh, monochromator and they already have more than 300 installations, mainly for sensor testing. So companies, um, many of them competitors of uh, Hamamatsu, making a photodiode source or any kind of photodetector uh, can use this uh, source for, for testing because of its high quality. Yeah. So the point is uh, how it fits in the microscopy application, it's also a challenge uh for me but i because i think this is a kind of a niche market 
but from the niche market appears the new application. So I am convinced that it will be interesting. So what is this uh, laser driven light source? Well, it's a kind of a combination of a laser and lamp, and it has a very broad spectrum. It means uh, it starts in the UV, around 170 nanometers, and it lasts to near infrared. This is uh, more or less the Shannon emission, but if we compare with the Shannon, later we will see, we have a, here a higher brightness or higher radiance compared with the, with the Shannon. It means because the emission spot of this lamp is very, very, very small. And so we can create very more simple optics or have a, a better uh, radiation, we will see. Also, this uh, lamp has a longer life than a standard Shannon or deuterium. It can be something like uh, four, four times, three, four, five times, compared on the, on the type of lamp, uh, longer lifetime. So it is uh, the lamp that uh, most of these uh, production companies use because they can use uh, 24 hours, seven days, every day and minimize exchanging the, the bulb or the, the lamp itself. So it is a long uh, lasting lamp with also a high brightness and a flat spectrum. And it starts to replace many of the xenon, deuterium and also tungsten, tungsten lamps. So, as I explained, as I said before, this is a laser beam with a focus that uh, is concentrated in the middle of the electrodes of this uh, lamp. So, re in, in reality, the emission spot is very, very, very small. Yeah? The family of uh, lamps you, you can see here, from the left, this uh, the smallest one that I think is the, the one that is fitting in some microscope applications. We have the same with an optical fiber, and then we have others with a higher, higher power that can be used probably when you need uh, more, 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 more intensity. But I, I will focus mainly the interest for microscopy in the AQ99 or the 99 with the optical fiber. Of course, in case of interest from some companies, it's uh, enough flexibility to make uh, customized products. Then here we can compare with the, with the other lamps. We compare with the Shannon lamp, 75 baht, or with the 30 baht deuterium. <clears throat> this is the, the spectral radiance uh, comparison. So it means if you if you really like some of the applications with the UV microscopy that I want to introduce later, you can even try with a with a 75 uh, Shannon lamp. Some people say, well, if I if I use 150 baht, maybe I get uh, more power, but you have a longer distance in the electrodes. So then you you get uh, lower density. So this is the point of uh, brightness regarding this uh, power or distance in the electrodes. So in any case, uh, Shannon, we also have Shannon, as you know, or you can also buy Shannon lamps from microscope companies. So it is also one possibility or deuterium in case you want to explore in more uh, UV. But in any case, for the 99 or the others, the the spectrum is very very flat and has higher higher intensity yeah it's a kind of a high upgrade uh, lamp for some uh, systems that work today here we see a, a comparison yeah with when we see a shannon arc lamp we see the the arc going from the two electrodes 
And also the, the anode usually glows in red because it gets a high temperature. In this case, uh, you have the electrodes, but uh, nothing is, is glowing or shining, only the small spot uh, activated by the, by the laser itself. Also, one of the points is not only the spot is small, but also it is very stable. It is stable in, in position, and also it's stable in time. It means uh, when the fluctuation with the Shannon can be, can be a problem, uh, this lamp offer more spatial, but also temporal stability. So why we need a high brightness or a small spot? So we can see two clear advantages. One is if you have a small, for example, optical fiber or pinhole or a slit that you want to concentrate the, the light, then uh, the light can be better concentrated if you have a small spot emission. With a Shannon arc, you have uh, more points to emit, so you have a worse uh, collection. Yeah. Here we can see another of the applications with the entrance slit in a monochromator system. It's also something that can be very small in order to make af after the very efficient degrading and everything. So here we can take also the benefit of a, a small uh, emission, emission point from the laser driven lamp. So after having the lamp and many people doing this integration with the monochromator, we decided to make our own monochromator. It's relatively new system, even in the previous slide, I say that they had already 300 systems delivered, but it is relatively new. So we we can deliver this system with uh, with libraries or a LabVIEW based uh, application. So for the moment, we don't have uh, uh, drivers for the major microscope companies and so on, because as I said. Uh, microscopy applications is quite a uh, niche uh, market. But here we see <clears throat> that we can get a quite good uh, uh, flux of uh, power in, in, the, in this uh, range of uh, emission. This lamp uh, was uh, this light source because it's a combination of laser and, la and lamp was used also for monitoring what was the, the response of the virus, the COVID, at uh, different UV wavelengths. So some people say uh, 254 nanometers is well to kill everything, bacteria or virus or whatever but 254 nanometers is the line of the mercury lamp. So it's very, very typical. So some company has started to say, no, no, no. We know that uh, 220 is much better because it has some uh, action on, I think it was the DNA or, or of, of the virus. So a group of uh, researchers in the, in the US was uh, working specifically to analyze what was the response at uh, a, a different wavelength. So here you need also uh, a kind of a monochromator, of course, but you also need some power, power, and then you can get the peak power, and then the the, uh, the exposure time used to measure what is the the reaction of the different uh, wavelengths. So then we move to the to the applications. So I I, I showed 
there are many applications in the in the US, and I could get this from from my colleagues in the energetic. So they <clears throat> they what they do is they take a benefit of the of the UV means oh, sorry in the 200 or 280 nanometers wavelength range to do a kind of a multiple image acquisition and then by doing this um, spectral analysis make a mapping of the intracellular proteins or the nucleate uh, acids and they say that they can reach in a femtogram per pixel so it is a very very interesting way of doing this and for this you you also need a uv uv camera to record and this is what they what they get the different sets of images and then processing in order to to make some spectral spectral analysis of the images i see there were other papers going into the same directions also by using this uh, deep ultraviolet ultraviolet mass mapping i can provide later if you are interested you email me and i can connect to one specialist of uh, energetic to get more details on this. But here <clears throat> we can see their, their sets of images for the nucleate, uh, for the protein, and they compare with a fluorescence of the H uh, fluorescence imaging. So this is kind of a, uh, uh, sort of applications that it's uh, done with the slums. Following also in, in this, this is also the, the study of these uh, structural proteins that are used to, to analyze the traction forces in, in cells. And, and they also use, the, as you can see, the same same lamp and also in wavelength 280 265 220 in a kind of this spectral analysis yeah following in the deep uv <clears throat> there is also a paper analyzing uh, two more cells and yeah, here the, we see the, the setup working in transmission modes and acquiring also a set of uh, different UV images in 220 to 300. Yeah. So most of them are working on the same principle, but I think there are not so many papers working on this kind of uh, application as far as I understand. So here we'll see also the, um, we see a different one. This is a microfluidic assay that wants to study the, um, the antibiotic diffusion. And here what I, what I extracted from the, from the drawing is that um, first they, they use a 340 nanometer but also here they the lamp by using a monochromator it's also used in an optical fiber so in order also to have uh, the better coupling in here it's also where the small spot is also useful in here you can you can get the image with the EM camera. I I will not say uh, use our Fusion BT because I think Fusion BT from my colleague Bruno presentation yesterday is not detecting 340, but we can propose other cameras and also EM cameras in the 
for the for the UV. But this is another topic, so I I I skip. Yeah. Then also one another that can be so interesting is also using this uh, deep ultraviolet uh, microscopy for label-free hematological analysis. So it's uh, so usually when you have uh, blood cells, you have to use uh, well a procedure for, with uh, dye, and well there is a laboratory process for for manipulating this sample before uh, image acquisition. Well, this is a proposal. That means without uh, marking with anything, just making a direct acquisition with a UV camera. This uh, can be extremely efficient if we can skip uh, all this preparatory process. But of course, this is a uh, a paper that shows the, the potential, it does not mean that this is already proven and ongoing uh, application in the hospitals today. But it can be in the future. It means it can, it can be a really, really interesting for this uh, efficient work, especially the previous work that you say so here you work also. You see it works in in transmission transmission mode and as i said you can also test with a standard channel lamp and if you see it's interesting then you can move to this uh, better lamp yeah then uh, i think it's uh, finally i think um, this is a different uh, application that uh, i saw this is in the scattering scanning near field optical microscopy. This is called the SNOM. And in this paper, they were analyzing the different light sources for this application. So they were using many, many different, many different ones. They were looking for one in the more infrared, let's say emitting let's say the 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 black uh, the black body they use uh, lasers uh, they analyze also synchrotron they analyze many different and they come to the to the conclusion that the <clears throat> the energetic uh, laser driven lamp was uh, really really interested interesting because it has a broad bandwidth and also it has a very high brightness here it says uh, this is 40 times higher brilliance than previous black body radiations and also it has compact size and also you can replace the bulb very easily so it is uh, something something new so this is uh, this was the the, the presentation I wanted to to tell. So it's something new. It's I know it's something quite a niche market. I do not expect everyone to to buy. We we are selling this laser driven lamp in in Spain and in Portugal for some applications, characterization of detectors and some other applications. But I expect uh, someone will be interested in exploring this UV or one of these uh, applications, and probably then we can also test it. We can we have uh, lamps for testing in Europe. We have uh, technical support in Europe, so we are ready to support uh, everyone in advance in in this. So I would like to thank you very much and i don't know if there is uh, some question let me how to i i don't know if there is some question of course if there's some question later or want to to share something you can also write me or write uh, any colleague from uh, Hamamatsu, and we can connect also with the energetic people, or we can 
or we can yeah do everything here. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, and if there is no question, then of course we can we can get lunch and save time <laughs> checking emails in order to be ready for the next uh, workshop that can be very, very interesting. It's a pity we if for the Maybe someone missed the workshops yesterday. Uh, Bruno and Mika presented the Fusion BT. It was a very nice camera that uh, with a more or a 95% quantum of efficiency and half of the previous uh, noise of the camera. It was an uh, amazing camera. And and, and yesterday afternoon, Sebastian did a very good uh, explanation of the basics of the noise and every range and something from the camera. And today, later, we have uh, Jordi that will do a, a short introduction of uh, splitting optics for double emission uh, microscopy double emission imaging in microscopy. And then tomorrow we'll have more. So we are doing, taking opportunity of the different uh, workshop opportunities that we that we have, because we have to adapt. It's a pity not to be in, in, in Valencia this week. It's a very nice city and possibility to more active interaction but uh, anyway that's uh, life and next time it will be it will be better yeah so okay so if there is no more no question so maybe we can close and then have uh, lunch okay thank you mm -hmm.